Hi, it's Chester at Blue Peak and Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to reverse the order or flip data. So I want Barry to be at the top, Bob to be at the bottom. First method is to index these rows. So I'll write a one there, select that cell. I'll do control on my keyboard, drag the fill handle down, it indexes each row. And all I need to do is select one cell in that column, right click, sort largest to smallest job done i can do the same for columns all i do is so clicking the row beneath the data i want to reverse i type a one hold down control drag the fill handle across then what i have to do for a horizontal sort is select all the data that i want to sort so that would exclude the row headings the row headings would always stay to the left of your data. Then right click on a cell, sort, custom sort, options, sort left to right, click on OK. And I want to sort by row four, which has my numbers in. Sort by row four, largest to smallest. Click on OK, it reverses the order. So this is by far the easiest method. There are a couple of methods that use formulas. And this might be useful if you want to keep the original data, but also have a reversed copy of the data that automatically picks up any changes. Now to use this first method, you need to know three functions, index, rows, and columns. So we'll look at rows first. Rows returns the number of rows in a reference or array. So if I selected these cells, it would say there are 10 rows in that range. Now I want to copy this down and for that number to decrease by one in each cell that I copy down to. So I need to decrease the number of rows that's counted every time it's copied. And I can do that by fixing the A12 reference. If I track this down now, you can see the number of rows that's counted decreases by one. You'll see why this is useful in a moment. Now, you also need to know about the columns function. And columns counts the number of columns in the range you select. And first of all, I only want to count one column. And I'm going to do that by giving a range of one cell, A3 to A3. But when I drag it across, I want the columns that are being counted to increase. So I'm going to lock the first reference. If I drag that across, you'll see that the number of columns that is counted increases by one each time. So how does this help us? Well, the index function over here, what we can do is within an array, which is this range of cells here, we can return values in any of the cells within that array. And you do that by specifying a row number and a column number. Now, I do need to fix that reference because I'm going to be copying the formula across and down. Well, the row number will be returned by my rows function, just as it does here. So I want to, first of all, return the values in row 10 because I'm reversing the order. So I select these cells and I fix that last reference. Then I want to better copy the index function across pick up this column here. So I can use the columns function now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say A3 colon A3. So in the first instance, the index function wants to pick up values from column one, but when I copy across to the second column, it wants to pick up values from column two. So that's why I fix that first cell reference in that range, close the bracket, and then close the bracket for index. And now if I copy down, copy across, you can see it reverses the order of the values. Now you can do it for a horizontal range as well, using the same idea. Index function is my array. Don't you need to fix that? And then I can use rows to say which row, either the first row or the second row. So initially, 
I want to return values from row one, but then it's the formula is copied down from row two. So I fix that first reference in that range, and then columns to return the correct column number. And you fix the last cell reference in that range. Close the bracket twice at the end. So now we copy down, copy across and it reverses the order. Now this method is only available in XR365. It uses the sort by function. And the first argument asks for an array of values that you want to sort. So that's what I'm going to sort. I don't need to fix it because sort by spills its results into surrounding cells. So I don't need to copy the formula. And then by array one, so what am I sorting these values by? Well, it's reverse order. And the way I can get that is to return the row number of each row within my data. Now, it doesn't matter which column I select. But if I select that part of the formula and press F9, that will just evaluate that part of the formula. You can see it's returning those row numbers. Now I'll undo that. And what I want to do is base it on a descending order of those row numbers. So the next argument allows me to specify a sort order and I can say descending. Press enter and you can see it spills its results into surrounding cells. Now I can use the same method for horizontal data equals sort by is my array the values I want to sort. My sort order is going to use the column function. I select those columns there. And again, that's going to return the column number. And I want to sort based on that, but in descending order. And again, it spills its results into surrounding cells. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.